Hi, my name is Mari Bowie, and I'm an attorney at the Nieves Law Firm, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to defend yourself from a domestic violence restraining order. So a domestic violence restraining order is one of four forms of restraining orders that you can have in the state of California. A domestic violence restraining order is a very niche area of law because the standard of proof is pretty low. It's the lowest burden of proof in any courtroom. It's preponderance of the evidence. All that means is that more likely than not, the allegations are true. Therefore, you have to be very smart and tactical about how you choose to approach in your defense. And again, a domestic violence restraining order can affect alimony, child support, visitation, and custody if you share kids with the person that's petitioning. Therefore, it's really important to attack this head on the best way that you can. Now, because the standard is by preponderance of the evidence, there is a likelihood and possibility that a judge may just look at the credibility of the parties in order to determine who's telling the truth and who's not. That puts people in a very tough position because a lot of times these allegations cannot be proven true or false. It lies on the testimony of he said, she said, which makes it really scary. The biggest thing when it comes to domestic violence restraining order is utilizing all resources in order to make the best defense. First, acquiring any text messages, anything of that nature, seeing if you're able to have eyewitnesses um, or character witnesses that can speak to the history and relationship with this party. If you're able to have witnesses to the incident, that's even better. If you're able to have camera footage, anything to negate that. If a party's saying that on this day, at this time, you hit them, but you were at the grocery store instead, proof of that is helpful. So again, anything that helps with alibi, there's a witness there to testify, there's lack of information, um, lack of specificity, all of those things matter. Um, Something that's also very helpful in these situations when it's like a he said, she said situation with no tangible proof is using evidence to impeach the petitioning party. What impeachment means is kind of casting doubt on their credibility. Either they may have a tendency to not tell the truth, they have a tendency to exaggerate, anything of that nature will be helpful because it helps diminish their credibility and bolster your credibility. Um, and again, the most helpful tools for domestic violence restraining orders are going to be text messages, pictures, screenshots, photos, phone calls, recordings. Obviously, all of those things are going to be really helpful. And also, you may have to decide at some point if it's more, if it makes sense for you to file your own domestic violence restraining order to then alter the game. Now, when you're defending yourself from a domestic violence restraining order, you have the right to file a response. Many times a response is a useful tool because it allows a judge some insight into what may be happening and what will be testified to in court prior to the hearing. So you wanna make sure that your response is super helpful, super detailed and thoughtful. And there's different ways to negate that, but specifically when it comes to, to domestic violence restraining order, you want to prove one, either that these events did not happen or two, the events may have happened, but they're not abuse and here's why. Now, under the domestic violence restraining order statute, it's not limited to physical abuse. So if there's some form of action, you may have to explain if this conduct is abusive, if it's not, and if it just straight up didn't happen. Um, if you find yourself the subject of a domestic violence restraining order, please contact the Nieves Law Firm and see how we can help you.